Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. In today's video, we're going to be breaking away from the usual blueprint breakdown formula of looking at a ship and all of its different variations. We're only going to be looking at one variation, because it's the only one I have, but I still really want to talk about this ship, because it is just absolutely incredible. You've already seen the thumbnail and the title of this video. If you've seen that, you've clicked it, you know what we're talking about today. It's going to be the Mare Serenitar. Artist Frigate, which is just absolutely insanely good and has become one of my favourite new ships. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it. It really does help. I know you must be sick of hearing YouTubers say, please hit like on the video, but especially for us gaming YouTubers, it really helps the algorithm. And without those likes on a video, we don't get recommended and I don't keep making Infinite Lagrange videos because, well, I don't get an audience. It's as simple as that. If you really enjoy it, subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome if you like all things internet spaceships. And of course, I do have a Patreon, which you can see at the bottom of the screen and in the description description down below if you want to help support this channel and keep me doing what I'm doing. Anyway, today then, the Mare Serenitatis, not the ruby, in fact, that I clicked on earlier, this beefy ship here. Now, we have three variations of this. As I said, we're only going to be taking a look here at the first variation, which is the anti-ship type, but there is also a missile type and an anti-aircraft type. Just the game will not give these to me. Like, crikey, I've gone through <laughs> so many boxes. I've gone through the research thing, the new 25 points research thing, all five times, not been able to get any of these or the new Alde uh, Aldebra or however you pronounce that, the new uh, destroyer and stuff like that. Anyway, so the Mare Serenitatis Heavy Frigate, it's anti-ship type. If we look at the basic stats here, you can see that we have a standard anti-ship firepower of 5022, which when fully upgraded can get us to 2972. We have respectable anti-air defense here of 1195 and actually pretty solid siege as well at 951. So straight out the gate, we have a very well-rounded frigate that can kind of do everything pretty well. Now, it is a five command point frigate, so it's sort of to the middling, toward the more expensive end of frigates. Um, obviously, it's still not like a Xeno Stinger at six. A full fleet of these is going to cost you 50 command points, which is pretty easy to achieve, a full like brace of 10 of these. But if we have a look at its combat rolls here, this, I think, is actually slightly misleading. It refers to it as A for anti-ship capability. It's actually probably an S rank, in my opinion, here. C for anti-aircraft capability is probably a B, and siege capability definitely a B here. I agree with that. Um, for a frigate, this does a lot of siege damage. It's excellent for taking out pirate encampments and stuff like that, especially if they're in sort of asteroid fields where you can only send in frigates. They actually have a remarkably good survivability as well. Grade A, high HP, and you can see that is 13,710. They're not lying, that's a lot of HP for a frigate of this size. The downside of this is the strategic capability grade C, because it is quite expensive to manufacture. But again, does that really matter in the grand scheme of things? Anyway, what I really want to draw your attention to here regarding the Mare Serenitatis, something that I had completely missed when I looked at it, is its main weapon system here, the AT360A Supernova Anti-Ship Torpedo. And if we tap on this, have a look at the left-hand side there. Attack against primary weapon. Now, you remember how absolutely insane I've said that things like the Newland and that are, the things that can disable a ship's primary weapon? Well, here we have a frigate that is capable of doing that as well. It's utter madness, and it works really, really well. Like, this actually seems to trigger more often than several of the aircraft fleets that I use. Um, so I don't know if it's got a higher thing that we just don't get to see if we tap into that. You know, there's no percentage chance or anything, but this does seem to do it more reliably than other ships out there there, which seems pretty cool. And the prioritized target here is also quite interesting in that it goes for large ships first. This means we go for carriers, then battle cruisers and cruisers. Now, a carrier's main weapon tends to be its launch bay. So if this can disable that launch bay, well, yeah, there we go. That's bye-bye carrier. It's now a floating brick. Battle cruisers. If you look at something like, for example, the Eternal Storm, its main weapon is its ion cannon. If you disable that, that's about 80% of its damage gone straight away. Cruisers often have a very powerful main weapon and sort of soft secondary weapons. Again, this all works in the Mare Serenitatis' favour. 
Now, a word about that name briefly as well, the Mare Serenitatis. I've mentioned in other videos that the word Mare actually relates to the seas or mares on the moon, Luna, our moon, the one that orbits Earth. Now, remember, Jupiter Industries ships tend to be named after actual things in our solar system, like Io and Callisto, things like that. Here, the Mare Serenitatis is one of the seas on the moon, the Sea of Serenity. Now, quite frankly, something that does this much damage and is able to uh, d destroy enemy ships, I'm not sure how Serenity comes into the name, other than, I suppose, that when, <laughs> when an enemy carrier or battlecruiser has no weapons left, it's pretty serene, it's quiet, it's not doing anything anymore, so there is that. Let's have a look at its upgrades though. Now the first one I tend to go for here is the Concentrate Fire Periodically. Sinks all weapons in the system with the primary weapon system to focus fire on a single target and reduces the cooldown by 80% every 90 seconds for 8 seconds. Now the sinking primary, uh, sinking all the weapon systems together, uh, that's a hit or miss because ultimately the, the cross near defense cannon here isn't really going to be doing all of that much in the grand scheme of things. It's that 80% cooldown reduction that is why we go for this. Being a missile ship as well, I tend to go for sympathetic detonation early on to get that 50% additional crit damage, then we go for missile torpedo damage and cooldown, sort of in equal rates, so that we get a good DPM across the board there, as you can see, 7067. Being a frigate as well, you don't need much in the way of weapon blueprints to max that out to its full 30% buff. It's well worth doing. Now, you do have some options here as well. The missile hit rate and torpedo hit rate by 2%, but considering you're a small ship going for large targets, you tend to have a pretty good hit rate anyway. Um, the torpedo interception can be useful to go for if you're going up against fleets that tend to have a lot of things intercepting incoming missiles. Um, so if you're spotting that your missile is getting intercepted a lot, that can be worth going for. Just drop one of the missile damages or the, uh, the rate of fire enhancements to grab that. There's also a siege ammo enhancement here. If you want to take that respectable siege damage and make it even higher, you can do. I don't tend to need to because I think once you've you know started hitting, um, hitting a station in space, a space city, a space city or a privateer outpost or whatever, ultimately you're going to get through it really anyway. Um, it's pretty good, you know, you've got pretty good siege firepower already. I don't really rate that as an enhancement, but there we go. Now, one thing I forgot to mention that is worth mentioning, of course, here as well, when we're talking about the fact that it's prioritized against large ships, most of those large ships, things like carriers, are going to be in the back row. Now, missiles and torpedoes will aim through their priority first, not using the rows. They will fire over rows in order to get to their target. So if the only carriers are in the back row, they will prioritize those first. Whereas cannons will go for whatever they have on their priority in the front row. Then once they'll go down their priority list through the front row, once the front row is empty, they'll move to the middle row and so on and so forth. That's how cannons work. Missiles and torpedoes will prioritize whatever it says they prioritize. So they are going to shoot at all the carriers till they're dead, then all the battle cruisers till they're dead, then all the cruisers till they're dead. And it is just a beefy system that is really going to cut through things. Now if I jump actually back to my main menu here and open up here we should have, there we go, Ganymede, the fleet I've been using for here. Now when I started this new server the first thing I did was build a whole load of Reliat stealth frigates because the stealth frigates have insane da damage to them and they've got that evasion to them as well. They actually work really well as a fleet of just themselves. They, uh, they evasion tank surprisingly well and they do a lot of damage. As I start expanding my base, I then started adding a couple of Corillian Special Frigates to that fleet. I think it was two at first, just to add that survivability a little bit more. Then I went full balls to the wall, Mare Serenitatis, a full fleet of 10 of those in there as well, before eventually adding in the Noma M470s. And these are just insanely good fleets. This will go anywhere. It will take out some really high power fleets quite comfortably. Recently, I've added the Xeno Stingers and the Rubies, but honestly, it doesn't even really need that. And that Mari Serenitatis there, let's have a look, 148k damage. And you can see that it's like getting involved here. This particular fight it actually hasn't done all that much in the way of uh, number destroying systems. There's probably another one around here somewhere that has, but it does work ridiculously well. And I know this is something a lot of you are going to be watching this going, well, okay, Benzie's been sleeping on this. Yeah, we all know that this ship is absolutely 
absolutely fantastic. But on the off chance that you haven't seen, there we go, that's a better one. If you haven't seen this, then just there. Three systems destroyed there against the AC721s. It's a really, really good uh, frigate. It's cheap. You can add a ton of these into fleets nice and easily, and they just do so much damage. Like, they will disable weapon systems. They will just utterly wreck through things. It is well worth getting a load of these into a fleet and just having some fun with them, in my opinion. Not only that as well, but just look at it. It looks really cool. I like the look of the Mare Serenitatis. This is a frigate that looks like it means business. Just really cool propulsion modules there on the back. It's got a sort of nice symmetrical design. It's beefy, but it's still slender at the same time. It's angular while being sleek. It just ticks all the boxes for me here. This is probably my new favorite frigate out there. And I know that's a ship title that keeps changing. It's been the Reliat, it's been the uh, the Mare Serenitatis. There was actually a brief period where it was the Noma. Yeah, it's now definitely the, uh, the Mare Serenitatis heavy frigate. Now, I will let you guys know once I get the missile and the anti-aircraft type how I go with those, but reports I've had from other people have basically been, yeah, they're not as good, which quite frankly, considering how amazing the anti-ship type is, I kind of understand, but do let me know if you've got the missile type or the anti-aircraft type and you think other people are talking crap and they've missed something. Otherwise, when I eventually unlock it, I'll come back and do a full blueprint breakdown on this one um, and talk about the details there. Otherwise, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this and other ships in the comment section down below. Look forward to talking to you. Um, I do still play Infinite Lagrange a lot. I do still enjoy talking about this game and I want to keep making content for it. So support me by hitting like on this and making sure that YouTube knows that these are videos that people are enjoying. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support. Happy sailing and see you in Infinite Lagrange.